before we go live, good morning to you. All right. So good morning. Today is Wednesday, May 12th. It's 9.05 a.m. This is a meeting of Senate Natural Resources and Energy. I think we'll only be meeting for roughly half an hour. We have uh, two pieces of timely business to attend to. One is S-124, which has come back from the House. Um, and, um, and then we also have an update on the actions around the scuttling reefing of the Adirondack, which we also looked into. So there's more uh, scuttlebutt and more news on that. Right. So let's start on S-124. We, uh, Senator McCormick reported it, sent it over to the House. The House did some uh, additional tuning on the bill. And I was wondering if we could just uh, start with, uh, with uh, Representative Yantachka and just give us the street view of what you looked at and what you changed, what you all were thinking, and then we'll look at the language with uh, council. Okay. Um, Representative Mike Antoshka from Charlotte, a member of the House Energy and Technology Committee. Um, and um, very thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here and uh, explain what we did. So we uh, pretty much accepted the uh, bill you sent over in toto. Um, the only thing we changed was section five and section nine and section and the changes are related. So in section five, um, we had testimony from Public Utility Commission and from uh, Green Mountain Power, a representative from a lobbyist for Green Mountain Power. And um, in section five, which deals with the uh, creation of a uh, low income electric rate mm -hmm. and changing the eligibility criteria from 150% of um, median family income, I guess, or federal poverty level uh, to 185% being the maximum uh, qualification. Um, and what we did was we deleted some language following that change to 185%. And the language which in our first instance of amendment says, strike out and the commission shall only set or change the eligibility level for any program created pursuant to the section after investigation evidence and hearing from the distribution utility sponsor of the program and other interested stakeholders. And uh, the reason we did that was because Green Mountain Power currently has a uh, low income program now. It's the only utility that does. And to if, if, if this were to take effect on passage or on uh, July 1st, I'm sorry, on July 1st, 2021, there wouldn't be enough time for uh, a hearing to conclude to determine the impact of the change to 185% on Green Mountain Power and its ratepayers, uh, because it would in, in expand the uh, the number of people participating in, right. in the program. So we elected to delete that uh, clause. And uh, in section nine, we set the, uh, we kept the uh, effective date for all the other sections of the bill on July 1st, 2021, and changed the, the uh, effective date for section five to take effect upon passage except for the existing program, which is Green Mountain Powers. And it, it'll take effect on once uh, the uh, Public Utility Commission um, evaluates and investigates the uh, program regarding those tariff changes for Green Mountain Power. Okay, well, that makes sense. So basically, we're aiming for the same place, but mm -hmm. you figured out a smoother transition that doesn't upset the GMP apple cart because there's too little time to implement without a, a problem. Right. Okay, great. Well, thank you for, for that. Any committee questions for Representative Yantachka? Okay, great. Um, Sounds reasonable. Yeah, thanks for coming down. 
Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, did anyone object? Did, has anyone argued against doing that? Mike? I'm sorry, I'm sorry what was the question? Or, or did anyone object to this? Has there been any argument against it? No, no. It came out of our committee 900 <laughs> and it uh, passed the House uh, on a voice vote unanimously. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, Ms. Chikowski, can you just uh, put it up on the screen so we, we see the changes? Thanks. Sure. Um, so it is posted um, under my name today. Uh, I had Jude post both the House and Senate version because this is an instant by instant amendment. But as Rep. Jan Tochka just described, um, this is really not a substantive change. It's more of a clarification. So it's moving. It does the same thing. It just moves the language that was in statute to be in a session law provision in the effective date section. So um, House proposal amendment is just moving the, the statutory language down into the effective date. Uh, and, and I do think this makes sense because there is only one program. So, uh, this is where we're talking about one program that just needs to have the uh, correct effective date for it. Okay. All right, great. Uh, any committee questions on the change? All right, so Senator McCormick, you were the original reporter. Um, I was thinking, unless you yeah. don't want to, that you'd be the reporter on the committee's position on the proposed amendment. Do you have any? I'll be happy to. Uh do we want to wait for a final decision so I can report a vote or just yeah, I mean, three I, zero I, zero is, is I, take care I just it. wanted to check with you now because yeah, no, we, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay. If you're the reporter, usually it means you look more carefully and stuff. So before, before we wrapped up, I yeah. wanted to make sure you were getting your questions in with that job in mind. Well, um, it sounds like look, nothing really changes except the timing for one entity because right. this imposes a burden on them and we want to give them time to, to do that. It's, great. it's reasonable. All right. A penny, and I was just being thorough when I asked if anyone objected. That's just, yeah. Um, well, I'm just wondering, did you, uh, on, on a vote, uh, I, I could report the vote as 300 um, or do you well, want to so wait? Well, we'll see if, if we it would be 302 and we would get, but we may have, That's what I meant. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 302 yeah. is what I meant. And we yeah. may have Senator McDonald before we're done. The other thing is we have um, uh, Mr. Landis Marinello with us this morning from the PUC. So I just wanted to uh, thank you, Ms. Tchaikovsky, check back in. Uh, good morning, thanks for rejoining us. Who knew in February that you'd be back here on the closing days to talk about the same thing again? <laughs> so um it, how is this it, it, from the puc perspective is this uh you folks all fine with the change no problem there y yes absolutely and um yeah again kyle landis marinello general counsel at the public utility commission and I, I think it's been described accurately that this is really just a technical correction and uh it's kind of a more elegant way to reflect the intent of the the bill that passed out of the Senate where the language that we put in there working with Green Mountain Power was to make clear that their program, the number would only change after it's been reviewed and they've been heard by the commission on the specific impacts to their program. So with this technical change, it just accomplishes that exact same goal um, in a more elegant way. Okay. Great. Well, um, uh, thanks to House Energy and Technology for fine tuning it, uh, coming up with the elegant solution. So with that, um, uh, if we let's uh, let's take a vote and hold it open uh, in, so that when if we Senator Westman is did confirm um, that he's in a committee of conference. So we, he won't be joining us, but we might see Senator McDonald. So, uh, Senator what is Campion, the chair? pardon me? What, what is the chair? What is the chair's preference? Can I just poll the other members of the committee or do you want to actually reconvene for, to get their votes? No, I, I can think, just poll them. 
since we're going to be up on the floor um, today, I don't want to pass over it again. Um, let's just take the uh, formal vote now. And if we have another member and hold it open until we adjourn this morning, if we have to report it as 302, that's no big deal. It's, it's no controversy here. So, but thank you for asking. So, uh, so all those in favor of uh, adopting, concurring with the House's proposal amendment to S-124, please say aye. 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 Okay, so we have a 302. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if you can hold it open and then we'll uh, see if we catch any other members before we're on the floor. So with that, thank you, Representative Yantachka, Ms. Tchaikovsky, Mr. Landis Marinello. Um, now we're surfing on to another topic this morning, and that is the Adirondack. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you. So uh, good morning, Commissioner Walk, Mr. O'Grady. Uh, we just wanted to touch base because the, the House sent us a proposal of amendment. And um, uh, Mr. O'Grady, I don't know if you can share a screen so we can just see the language. I want to make sure everyone's I th they've had it by email, but I'm not sure everyone has seen it. So if we could just put it I'm up. I'm sure. Well, uh, let me navigate to your, um, to your website. Okay. Um, and Commissioner Walk, thanks. For, and Ms. Rudy, both. Thanks for jumping in it's that time of year where on short notice, we things happen. All right, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, yes. thank you. Okay, so just to refresh your memory, the Capitol bill, uh, when it came over from the House to the Senate, it had a provision in it um, that arguably directed the Division of Historic Preservation not to authorize the sinking of the um, ferry Adirondack. Uh, there was some confusion about that language. It was discussed in Senate institutions. Senate institutions looked at a couple of different proposals and then conferred with you and included in the Senate proposal on the Capitol bill uh, directive to the agency of natural resources to adopt rules regarding um, the issuance of lake encroachment permits for the sinking of vessels. That went over to back to the house. House Corrections looked at it and asked House Natural to look at the proposal. House Natural said, rulemaking implies uh, authorization to do something. And they would prefer to just simply prohibit the sinking of vessels under encroachment permits. And so their original proposal was just to prohibit those encroachment permits for sinking vessels. However, they took some testimony. They um, heard from interested parties. They realized that maybe a full-scale permanent prohibition on those permits may not be um, as informed as necessary right now. So instead of having a permanent prohibition, they are, are proposing a three-year moratorium on the issuance of lake encroachment permits for the intentional sinking of a vessel in any lake or pond within the jurisdiction of the department. And with all that said, I am sure all of you have heard that the Division of Historic Preservation has withdrawn their um, approval, withdrawn their permit to sink the Adirondack and have no plans as of now to go forward with the sinking. Right. And did that just happen yesterday? Yesterday afternoon from yeah. my knowledge. Okay. All right. So- And this um, morning's in, news. Okay. So in terms of finishing up our business, um, it would seem like it would make sense to go ahead and tidy up, right? Like that we would be looking at the proposal. I mean, the capital bill still needs to be finished. So 
we still have this proposal in front of us from a legal point of view, isn't it? Is that right, Mr. Grady? I, 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 technically, the, the House further proposal of amendment to the Capitol Bill has not actually been passed yet. Okay. Um, but it will likely come over to you in the next day or so. Okay. And so from a legislative procedure point of view, you would, as a body, need to look at this and see if you approve it. Okay. Well, knowing that it's tricky to get together, uh, I, I guess it would be weird to have a vote that pre-authorized something. Mm. But let me just take a sense of committee. My sense is that um, this is more protective. We had our own concerns about what was happening, but there had been a permit issued. And so we weren't going to interfere with a permit issued. Um, it, uh, so there's sort of happy, for some folks, uh, happy news on the side that the applicants withdrawing the permit or whatever. I don't know what they do, yield the permit back up, uh, whatever it is that happens. Um, but then this language will come over. Um, and so let me just sort of straw poll with committee. Uh, if, if this is what actually arrives, um, I'd like to have a sense of the committee so that if we have any difficulty reconvening as a panel, and this happens on the, that I can report to institutions and to our colleagues that our committee supports the pro uh, pending proposed amendment from the house. Is that an accurate statement? So let me just do this one by one. Senator McCormick, do you support the, the language as currently offered or about to be offered by the House on a, with a moratorium? Yes, I do. I would like to be clearer on the procedure here, but yeah. that's right now on the merits, yes, I support this. Language. Okay. And then just on the, thanks on the, we'll keep procedure and merits separate. Yeah. Um, Senator Campion? Uh, are you fine on the merits? Yes, thanks, uh, Senator Bray. I, um, I do have some additional questions, but yes, I'm fine. Thank okay. You. Well, and we have um, Commissioner Walk here with us, so uh, we can also, uh, let's check in with the, the commissioner. So there's both the news item that... Um, you know, the, the permit has been, I, I'm not sure what they actually do. They return a permit to you or not, uh, this uh, Division of Historic Preservation. Uh, but in terms of the moratorium, is this something that uh, the department has any position on? Uh, I thank you, Senator Bray. For the record, Peter Watt, Commissioner of the DC. I guess I have a question for Mr. O'Grady if you don't mind as to, yeah, please. I, I, I am a little confused as where we are in process. This replaces the, the direction from the Senate to, to do rulemaking on the sinking of, or the reefing of ships. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Can, can everyone hear me? My system's kind of frozen up and I'm not sure if. Yeah, I hear you. you. Okay. Uh, yes, that's correct, Commissioner. Uh, the, there would no longer be that directive. You still, as still um, have rulemaking authority, the right, the discretionary rulemaking authority, and in, in that title. Okay, um, Mr. O'Grady, are you still in screen sharing mode? I am trying to get out of screen sharing <laughs> mode, but it is. I think I need to leave and then come back because it is just totally frozen. Okay, why don't we? do that because now on my screen most of us are frozen um so commissioner walk sorry i had like double screens going there with most people frozen can you ask your question again and share mr grady's answer just so sure my my question was just on a where we are in the, the language in the capitol bill um there you had proposed to, to direct us to do rulemaking specifically around the sinking of ships. I asked Mr. O'Grady whether that language had been superseded by this language on the moratorium. And he said, yes. Uh, and he, we reminded each other of the fact that we still have discretionary rulemaking authority uh, within that title. Okay, great. So, Thanks for the clarifications. Um, so Senator Benning, Chair of Institutions did get in touch with me uh, yesterday 
prior to the news um, and just ask if I had a sense of our committee. And I said, I, I thought we would likely support the moratorium and it sounded as though institutions would as well and that it would, would be all sort of on the mode of uh, tidying things up for this year. The moratorium buys time for uh, frankly a, a bigger conversation that we acknowledged that we might want to have, but there was no time to get into the broader issue of public trust doctrine and lake encroachment more broadly. So we ended up staying very narrow, which was fine for the Capitol bill, but um, with a three-year moratorium, it does leave, a, whatever, it buys everyone time if someone wants to move forward on the, the broader questions. Um, and let me just ask a quick question of Commissioner Walk. I don't know if the fact that we've all been through this discussion in the last several months over lake encroachments or and sinking of vessels. If is the uh, department contemplating a, you know, you can do rulemaking, I believe, uh, uh, at your own initiative on this. Um, is this spurring you on to think, oh, well, we need to do a rulemaking because there's enough controversy or confusion uh, around either lake encroachment or public trust doctrine as it applies to lake encroachment? So I, I think we're still uh, dealing with the various uh, changes to what's occurred over the last few weeks. Um, we were prepared as you had directed to do rulemaking around the sinking of ships. As I've described to you, I don't think that setting up clear, uh, you know, sort of quantitative criteria over broader lake encroachment issues is the appropriate measure to implement the public trust doctrine, but that's my perspective. Yep. Um, and the and so we were prepared to do that on specific issues related to the thinking of ships. Frankly, I would like, it sounds like this body is not done with this conversation. And so I would think it would probably be premature for us to, to launch into rulemaking uh, in advance of, of you all likely taking this up in some form again next year, because it sounds like there is significant interest. And so at that point, I would, you know, I, given that the, the moratorium would provide time for that consideration to occur, I would, I would hold off. Okay, great. So um, thank you. I wasn't aware until uh, Mr. O'Grady came in this morning that the this amendment had not yet cleared the house and got voted over with uh, uh, capital, the capital bill's second round. So we will uh, process wise, uh, just hold a brief meeting to uh, hold a vote once it's uh, appropriate in terms of timing before this comes back to the floor. Um, on the Senate floor. So, um, Senator McCormick. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanna make sure I've got this right. This is an amendment to the capital construction bill. So it's going to the institutions committee. Our role here is advisory because it's deals with the area of government over which we're the committee of jurisdiction but it's not a matter that we actually have a, we are have an advisory role to the institutions committee and an advisory role to the Senate. Am I correct in that? Exactly right. So I think uh, we'll, we'll want to take a, a formal position just so that our colleagues yeah. know where yeah. we stand on both those fronts. Thank you. And I, I will report that to the institutions committee as well since Great. I serve on both this committee and that, but you as the chair will report it on the floor. Uh, sure, and um, okay, well, great. So thank you everyone for adjusting on the fly, keeping us up to date with something that's still moving. And um, when it arrives on our side, um, I'll work with Jude to get the word out to everyone and we'll convene briefly to just uh, formally take a position so we can report out to our colleagues. Um, Okay. Um, if, unless anyone has any further business, um, we are finished for today. I would just ask people, I'll try to make announcements when we're going to, if we're going to meet and when, and um, Jude will of course send out uh, emails. So uh, I know it's a little bit catch as catch can for the next 10 days, but uh, we'll tidy up and be, be done. So 
thanks very much to everyone. Uh, we are adjourned.